All right, can you see? Yeah, they walking in like this. Do they, do they kind of walk on like this? All right, so you're just observing everything, looking at the posture. So we'll start with standing. So I'm just going to stand here and face that way. Okay. So usually I'll start with the top and look and see if their head's level, shoulders. Uh, so I mean that's some of the stuff I might mention lower body, but obviously we're doing more upper body for this. Okay. So then uh, now I want you to face this way. Okay, then now I'm going to look. Like we talked before about if you have a plumb line, you're looking for if the head's forward, if the shoulders are slumped forward, mm -hmm. if they have any excessive kyphosis or dosis. And then, again, from the other side, if you're looking for any evidence of scoliosis, and then turn and face me. So then, again, you're looking for <coughs> basically assessing the posture. All right. So, okay, we're not doing a little bit of range of motion. All right, Good. turn and face this way. I want you to bend forward, reach down towards the ground. Okay, what am I doing right now? Okay, so I'm looking for any uh, evidence of scoliosis that goes away when she bends forward. If it stays there, it's a structural scoliosis. If it uh, goes away, it's more likely to be functional. Okay, I want you to have a seat up on here. All right, so then next we're gonna go with uh, cervical. Basically, we're going to start with cervical and kind of work our way down to the fingertips, okay? So we'll start with cervical range of motion. Um, we'll go over all the details of the instrumentation stuff a little bit later, but we're just going to run through. So what's the cervical range of motion I'd do first? To <coughs> the flexion, once you've been here for reach in, chin towards your chest. Okay, bend backwards. Okay. Any change in your symptoms with that? Then I want you to bend your head to this, without moving your shoulders, bend your head to one side. Same thing to the other side. Okay. Any pain or change in your symptoms? Okay, turn your head this way. And same thing over there. Okay, now I'd be doing that with goniometers and inclinometers, but we'll practice that later. Okay. Yeah. Alright, then now I'm gonna get into basically the progression of the different cervical compression types of things. Okay, so I'm gonna start in a neutral position like this. Okay, what test is that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cervical for animal compression. And what comes next? I'm going to do three different positions. Extension. Okay. This is more or less what you consider like a loose pack position of the, of the neck. Now when I'm putting her back down like this, press down here, I'm looking for what? Either pain, local pain, or does it radiate down? Yeah. And then what's the next progression? So back like that. I'll press down here, over here the same thing. Okay, and what's next? Jackson, which is rotation. Okay. Right. And now I'm going to do shoulder depression. And what side am I testing? Yeah, we're stretching the brachial plexus on this side, but we're also compressing some of the nerves, the facets and things on this side. So the quote positive sign for brachial plexus problems, the symptoms in this area, maybe even radiating down, radiating down to the arm. But it could have symptoms on this side. So this would be, like if I was documenting, you'd say ipsilateral, you know, pain in the right shoulder or down into the arm, and this would be contralateral. Okay. Then we can do cervical distraction, right, which is typically shown like this, but we talked about where you can do it like this, you can do it like this, okay, so basically you're just taking pressure off of the nerve. Okay, so like with what you're talking about, these are all tests that you would do for neck types of conditions, and then specifically certain ones you're looking for with pain radiating down the arm. All right, then you can do, what's a fast for you to do a test to demonstrate, to assess intrathecal, increase the intrathecal pressure, what would that be? Okay, so valsalva is where you have the patient take a deep breath, 
hold it, lay down, let me know if you have any increase in symptoms. So you could, you could produce symptoms down into the arm, it could be any type like a spinal tumor or disc herniation, it could be down the arm, it could be down the leg. It's the same test that we'll do later on for leg problems. Okay. Then we can do also the uh, seated root test. That one's uh, yeah. There's kind of a nerve traction type of test. Okay, so if we're doing nerve tests, what are the different ways that we test for nerve problems? So yeah, there's not. We didn't really talk about any tunnels, but I mean, you could do one in here for the neck. But so yeah, you can either tap or compress on a nerve, or you narrow the opening. Okay, so we did that by doing pyramidal compression, specifically in this position like that or you stretch the nerve along its pathway. Okay, so we're going to do so haul like this, and then you can add to that by standing the knee like that, and then going down like that. All right. Okay, so then now we can get into thoracic outlet stuff. And there's a couple other cervical ones that we're going to do later for uh, in different positions. Right? Because we, we did inert tissue, um, yeah, then so, okay, for, so for contractile tissue, what's the contractile tissue test that we can do for the neck? If you want to differentiate, somebody has a traumatic neck injury, like their heads get snapped back and forth, or the whiplash type of an injury. What's the test that we can do to differentiate between if it's a inert tissue like a sprain versus contractile tissue like a sprain? Right. So that'd be done in this position as well. So I want you to press your head forward this way, and press back in my hand here, and then press over this way, and press here, and then try to turn your head this way, and then other side over here. Okay, so then what are you looking for when you do that? Yeah, looking for reproduction of pain. If they have, re <coughs> what does that indicate? Is that going to be ligament problem or a muscle problem? Muscle. 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 So then for, for ligaments, then we're going to do passive range of motion. You could do it in this position, but passive range of motion on the neck is usually done better supine. 